The topic of this video is graphing a quadratic function using its vertex, axis, and intercepts. This is a continuation of the previous video. Okay, so in our previous video, we completed parts A and B. We found the intercepts and the vertex. We're now ready for part C, creating the graph. Now, before you create a standard grid that looks like this for making your graph, where you're showing quadrants 1 and 2 and 3 and 4, it is wise to take a look at the kinds of points you plan on plotting on your graph and then emphasizing the quadrant where most of the points will be. For example, if we look at the x values of the three points we plan on putting on our graph, they are 0, negative 11, and negative 22. In other words, the left side. And if we look at the y values, they are 0, 0, and negative 121. In other words, the bottom. So really, we're only interested in quadrant 3 for this particular graph. So let's go ahead and create our grid, emphasizing quadrant 3. Here's the x, here's the y. All right, our x values need to go all the way out to negative 22. So let's just go ahead and plot a negative 22 here. In the middle would be negative 11. So that handles our x's. Uh, 0, of course, is the y-axis. And then our y's go all the way down to negative 121. And with that, we should be able to plot all of our points. Okay, let's begin. 0, 0 is the origin. So we have this point. Negative 22 comma 0 would be here. These are the two x-intercepts. This one also happens to be the y-intercept. And then the vertex is way down here at negative 11 comma negative 121. Now we know that this particular parabola opens up. And the reason we know that is because the coefficient a 1 is positive. When it's positive, your parabola opens up. And since this is the vertex down here, we know that we have to go from the vertex up through both of these intercepts using a parabola shape. And with that, we've now created the graph of our parabola. Okay, part D asks us for the domain and the range. Okay, well, we can get the domain and range simply by looking at our graph. Domain measures the x-coordinates, which is how far your graph goes left or right. The part of this graph that is furthest to the left is represented by this arrowhead, and the part of the graph that is furthest to the right is represented by this arrowhead. So, let's look at the way these arrows are pointing. This arrow is pointing up and left, but for domain, where we're measuring left or right, we don't care about up, we only care about left. So this represents a negative infinity as far as the domain is concerned. This arrowhead is pointing up and right, but again, we don't care about up, we only care about right. Right forever is infinity. So the domain is negative infinity comma infinity. This is consistent with something that we read in a previous video, which is that the domain of every quadratic function is all real numbers. All right, and that brings us on to our range. So our range it was going to be measured by going from the lowest to the highest. The lowest point on our graph would be this one right here, which has a y coordinate of negative 121. And the highest is represented by this arrowhead, or this arrowhead. They're both going up forever. And so that would be a positive infinity. I'd like to emphasize something here. When measuring range and looking at this arrow, it's pointing up and left. But since this is range, we only care about the up, which means it's going up forever. So this one arrowhead symbol represents two different types of infinities at the same time, depending on whether, whether you're measuring the domain or the range. The domain, it's left forever, so it's negative infinity. But with range, it's up forever, so it's positive infinity. And since we can trace a path from the lowest point to the highest point on our graph without picking up our markers, that tells us that we have no missing values in between the negative 121 and the positive infinity. And therefore, our range would be written as follows, negative 121 comma infinity. Infinity and negative infinity always get parentheses. What sort of symbol should we put here? Well, think about the definition. Range. The definition of range is a collection of all of the y-coordinates. This point right here is the point negative 11, comma, negative 121. 
and it has a y coordinate of negative 121. Therefore, negative 121 belongs in the range. Therefore, we must use a bracket to include it. And then finally, that brings up part E. Now remember that part E, uh, intervals of increasing, decreasing, and constant. Intervals of increasing, decreasing, and constant, by human definition, are always open intervals containing only x values. In other words, they look like this, where there's an x value here, and there's another x value here. So let's see if we can determine the intervals of increasing, decreasing, and constant for this particular problem. So we travel along our graph from left to right, and we find that as we are doing this, we are decreasing. These are x values that we're measuring, which is what I have shown here. In fact, let me just go ahead and erase all the y values so that there's no confusion. Uh, that should be sufficient. Let's just make this a little closer here. Okay, so the only thing that I have visible right now are x values. Negative infinity, negative 11, and infinity. Those are all x values. Okay, we are decreasing from negative infinity to negative 11. And remember, it's always parenthesis, parenthesis, x value, x value for intervals of increasing, decreasing, and constant. Once we pass through the vertex, we're no longer decreasing. Now we are increasing, and we're increasing from negative 11 to infinity. So negative 11 to infinity. No part of this parabola is constant. So there's no portion of this graph uh, that, uh, that is constant. In fact, you won't even be asked that question uh, in your uh, math learning software. Okay, and with that, we are finished with this problem. Uh, you can see that this is a very effective way to create the graph of a parabola.